Welcome to New Tech, my name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video we're going to be looking at some really cool projects to do on your laser cutter and some unconventional ways on how to use it, so stay tuned. So one of the things I love doing when I get a brand new machine is to push the boundaries and see what I can get out of it. Um, and in today's video, I'm going to be looking at this uh, Laser Master 3 by Auto and using their 10 watt laser module as well. So a lot of the projects that you can see today um, have been kind of experiments and, and ways of, um, I've always wanted to try certain things um, and it has done these projects absolutely flawless. So I'm really happy with the outcomes. I'm going to start with my favorite project. Um, it's this pencil here. I know that it doesn't look like much, but it was a really fun project to do. And essentially, this is kind of using uh, a rotary axis, but it's not actually using the rotary axis that comes with the machine. It uh, is a project that I created my own little jig that um, I'm able to laser cut it and do these really cool patterns around the pencil. So the challenge for me for this project was to create a pencil from absolute scratch. So this is just using uh, I think 4 mil plywood um, out of pine and uh, just using a pacer uh, insert in the center. So you can see that it's come out with this really cool pattern afterwards. I've just given a really quick uh, sand afterwards, which has really uh, made these outlines highlighted and uh, really stands out. Um, so I really love the concept behind this pencil. Um, even though I kind of stuffed up the back of it a bit, I, I cut it off accidentally when I was doing one of the laser uh, programs. And uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, it did chop it off a bit early, but that's absolutely fine. And it's one of those projects where I, I really loved what happened, the outcome of it, the process of it, and it's uh, certainly one of those projects that I'm gonna try um, and certainly elaborate on down the track. Now I've had a go with some engraving here using uh, a, a front of a, a diary. So uh, that was a really nice um, project to do and it's something leading up to Christmas time that I'm gonna start to think about these type of projects um, for friends and family that I'm gonna give away. So this one here, I've purchased some uh, American walnut plywood, um, especially for laser cutting. So that means that they use special type of glue that is safe for laser cutting um, and it also, it's it's a really lovely timber to cut and really nice to finish too. So I've just put a, a wax over the top of some of these uh, uh, timber parts just to make them uh, darker and, uh, and kind of protect them from the elements over time as well. I've also had a go at cutting some leather and uh, this was a very interesting project. I, I have seen some people use leather previously using a laser cutter. But what I didn't understand is how bad it smelled. So I gave up very quickly using the leather, but what I tried to do in some of these is to kind of um, do a faux or a fake uh, stitch around the edge, just because it was more for these little tags. And once again, as an experiment to see what is possible. But I mean, they look fantastic um, and certainly something that I might come back and try again. Uh, and I've been able to use that with Perspex. So it's using three millimeter black Perspex and absolutely carved through it with no problem at all. Um, I've had a go at this phone stand as well. So once again, using some of the plywood that I've purchased, absolutely carves through beautifully and it's really nice to finish this off. Um, and what I find about this laser ply is that it can carve really, really nicely. So the laser ply has a really clean finish and you can also get some really, you can, you can play around the settings to go really dark or really light with your engraving as well. 
Now, a couple of other projects that I really love, I've done these puzzle pieces as well. So some of these puzzle pieces, I've had to give a bit of a go at a couple of different techniques. So this one at the back here is just using a, an engraved uh, picture. Now, I created this picture using uh, DALI 2, which was a really fun project to do. So I wanted to use an image that was uh, a royalty-free image, something that I was able to use and be able to share. Um, but uh, you know, it was hard to come up with a concept very quickly, but I jumped onto DALI 2 and I searched for a, a simple um, artwork for a children's story. So it's uh, kind of this, uh, this rainforest uh, scene and uh, includes there's a monkey up in the top and a moon and stuff. So that was a really great starting point with uh, the image from DALI 2. I converted that over to Lightburn and uh, turned it into an engraving. So I was able to engrave that first firstly onto the four mil plywood and then cut it out. Now the vector itself, I was able to create using a website. Now I'm gonna have all these files linked down below. This is a free website to create puzzle pieces on. So it's really fun, especially leading up. You've got kids that so you've got family who want a personalized puzzle. This is a fantastic website to jump onto. You can create different sizes. You can create different um, types of puzzle pieces. So jump on there and you can download that file, import it into Lightburn and off you go with cutting. So these were a lot of fun. Now the front puzzle here, you can see that it's in color. Now I was doing some research about how to apply color to ply the best way to get an image from the computer and put it onto plywood. Um, and I tried one way here using a, a transfer vinyl, or I think it's a transfer sheet that you can print off using the computer um, and using the printer and then iron it onto a shirt. But instead of ironing onto a shirt, I ironed it onto some plywood and it came out really, really nicely. Unfortunately, this paper that I've had, I've had it for about 10 years sitting in the bottom of a box. So I, I don't know if it's any good anymore. So it did come out with some speckling of the paper over the design. And I did try to get rid of that and I used just a bit of a clear varnish over the top. Um, it did kind of work, uh, but it's something that I think I need to go and purchase some new paper and try it again. But once again, it's one of those projects which I really love the idea of. You can put color onto timber and you're able to laser cut it. So this came out really, really nicely. It's certainly a project that I can't wait to experiment with in the future. Now, I've had a bit of a play around with this one here. Now, this one is a Noughts and Crosses board. Um, but what I really love about this is when I purchased some laser ply recently, I purchased it in a couple of different types of timbers. Um, and this is really beautiful to see the, the laser pieces um, laid on top of different, uh, different colors of timber. And it's really beautiful, a really nice gift um, to give away. Uh, and you can see here, I've, I've tried to figure out how is it possible to create the, the correct amount of pieces depending of what you're started with. So the person who starts first gets this weird little piece in the middle here. Now this one here is a noughts or cross, so you can use it depending on which, uh, if you're the noughts or crosses, but um, I don't know anyone who ever gets to the last piece anyway in their game without uh, causing a draw. Now this one here, um, this is a really fun project here. I've, I've been wanting for some time, I've, I use a keypad on my CNC machine um, just to help kind of set up a project. And you can see here that this is, uh, it's, it's more of a skin, it's kind of deceiving, but I've kept most of the keys underneath um, and taken out the ones that I don't want. So I wanted to create a project where I could run my hand over the top of the keypad and it would come up with, um, uh, these uh, embossed uh, keys. So it just makes it really easy to make sure I know which button I'm hitting. I'm not uh, accidentally hitting the wrong button. Um, and it looks really, really nicely in the American Walnut uh, ply, laser ply that I've used for this project. Um, and those buttons click really, really nicely. Um, so I was really proud and really happy with this outcome of the, uh, the controller for the uh, CNC keypad there. Now, one of the projects, well, this is a sample that I made um, when I first got the machine. I wanted to see what the definition or the resolution that I could be cutting at. And I cut out this four mil piece of ply that I had 
um, and I was absolutely gobsmacked. I find that the diode laser machines are really good at getting detail. Um, compared to some of the CO2 laser cutters that I've used in the past, this has a really small kerf on it. That means that the, the laser that it, um, or the cutting area that it makes is a really fine detail and you can get some absolutely beautiful uh, details out of your laser. So you can see here, I've um, got a close up of uh, what the, the internal parts of this laser cut were they kept together and they fell out beautifully um, and they are honestly if it must be like a 0.05 of a millimeter some of these pieces but they they stayed together really really well and it's I think it's just a great example of what the detail and what quality you can get out of some of these diode laser machines so I've had absolute blast using this auto laser master 3 machine and I can't wait to see what other projects that I can make with it especially leading up to Christmas coming up with some really fun projects to give away to friends and family. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video guys and thanks very much for watching. So don't forget to like my video, subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. Down, down.